So with the rumors of Juan Soto potentially being traded this offseason, it got me thinking, what would happen if he actually did get moved? And this week, a lot of rumors were starting to fly around, and there's been three teams that I've really noticed have been involved. It's been the Cubs, the Yankees, and the Red Sox. And that doesn't mean that there's other teams that aren't being rumored or there, are other, there aren't other teams that could get involved. The Mets always get involved. The Mariners always seem to be rumored for some trades. The Giants always seem to be rumored for some acquisitions as well. So again, there could be other teams that do get involved in this Juan Soto sweeps. I'm just saying the teams that I've seen the most this week are the Red Sox, the Yankees, and the Cubs. So that's what we're going to do today. And if he ends up getting traded in the future, we're definitely going to do a Juan Soto video then. But today we're going to hop into it and we're going to hop in with those three teams and we're going to simulate a season or two to see how Juan Soto would really impact the team. Does the team keep them after the first season? Does he just play with them for one year? Let's wait and find out. Let's see what would happen. And we're going to start with the Red Sox first. Before we get any further, don't forget to check out Underdog Fantasy, who this week weekend for halloween they're running a pick em special for mike meyer and don't forget to check throughout the weekend with the nfl season the nba mlb playoffs and all that stuff they like to run special pick up entries throughout the day so if that sounds good to you head over to underdog fantasy and use code ant when signing up or click the link in the description down below you'll get your first deposit matched up to 500 dollars and also first time users do get a pick em entry special just for you so again if that sounds good head over to underdog fantasy and use code ant when signing up so for this video what i'm going to use is baseball trade values it's a website where you can do a trade simulator and i don't necessarily hate the website but i don't necessarily like it that much either i feel like the values are kind of all over the place but like i said some like i don't hate it because some of them are pretty pretty decent but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with the red sox so as you can see the red sox they're getting juan soto who currently has a value just shy of 23 right so we're gonna hop over now to the the red sox and we're gonna try to figure out what the red sox would give up I honestly think we should probably go just a little bit above because if we're starting to get into a little bit of a sweepstakes for a Juan Soto trade, I feel like you're going to have to pay a little bit extra to get Juan Soto. And so I saw that it was a trade offer or like a trade idea from Jim Bowden who said he the, the Red Sox would have to give up Tanner Houck, Verdugo, Miguel Blyce, and I believe there was someone else attached. The thing I'm seeing with this right here is you've got Houck who has a median value of just under 22 and you also have Blyce who has a median value of just under 30. So I don't know if the Padres would just take a one-for-one -one trade if you're looking at Tanner Houck or Miguel Blyce. I think if you're taking a prospect, you're probably looking for some sort of package. And I'm not saying that like Blyce is overrated here. I think Miguel Blyce is a very highly sought-after prospect. I'm just saying I feel like you're going to have to give up some sort of package to get Soto. So I think I'm going to avoid Blyce for this trade just because I also don't think the Red Sox would want to give him up. But who knows? I think if you get Juan Soto, you'd be okay. You kind of be somewhat okay with getting rid of the D, uh, getting rid of a player. But what I'm thinking is, how we could we could stick with that Verdugo as well, and that currently gets us just over the value, right? We're at 26.9. And then I was just thinking maybe like somewhat of like an MLB ready reliever or close to an MLB ready like pitching prospect that isn't really sought after too much. It's just someone in like the middle range maybe like a three or a four maybe two um so maybe oh man i'm trying to think who unless we want to just go full mlb ready players and go luis urias who i don't really think has that much of a value right now so maybe maybe bastardo maybe we throw him into the video like throw him into the trade and it's just shy of 30 we rock with this for the trade i feel like you know what Yes, you're giving up two MLB ready players, but essentially Verdugo spot gets taken by Juan Soto. Tanner Houck gives them an MLB ready pitcher. And then um, I believe this is Eduardo Bastardo from the Red Sox. So I think this is the trade we're going to rock with. So let's go do it in MLB The Show and let's see how it plays out. Okay, so I didn't have the pitching prospect that I needed that I came up with in the trade. So instead, we're just going to go back to that Luis Urias idea that I had. And we're going to go Houck, Verdugo, and Urias for Juan Soto. Yes, I do have uh, force trades on to make sure that this deal is possible. And just because I didn't think I was going to be able to trade for Juan Soto, no matter who I put into a trade. Um, so we're going to rock with this for the Red Sox. And I do I do think losing Hauk and Verdugo is definitely going to suck. Um, but at the same time, I feel like Verdugo, I believe, is coming up on free agency at the same time as Soto as well. So it's kind of like you're losing that player who's about to become a free agent. 
and then losing a pitcher that's Hauk is probably the big piece in this trade right here Verdugo and Urias are a little bit of a supplement so um yeah I think we're gonna rock with this for the first trade so let's see what the Red Sox did in the offseason with also acquiring Juan Soto and we'll go we'll go to transactions completed and let's take a peek here so obviously the trade right and then in free agency they signed Caleb Smith a few other pitchers it looks like Cole Tucker Montero from the Rockies Luis Gonzalez from the Giants Kate Marlowe so it looks like they've signed a lot of depth pieces for the team right here and I'm trying to see if there's any big moves that would have okay so Jack Peterson so essentially another outfielder to help out with the team and that is a big move right there so not only did they go out and get Juan Soto but to replace Tanner Houck they went out and get and got Shohei Otani which is huge obviously in real life Otani wouldn't be pitching this year he would be um, injured so he'd probably just be DHing so he would definitely slide into that DH spot anyways but man this gives the team a lot of lefties in the lineup and uh, it, it's interesting to see some of these names here in the squad so overall I feel like this team's pretty good I definitely think Justin Turner gets into this lineup a little bit more but maybe not actually with Devers okay maybe not maybe not maybe Trevor Story hops in the lineup at second base instead of Christian Arroyo but overall I feel like this is a pretty solid team especially with Otani and Soto in the same squad and then you can kind of see the pitching staff that um the CPU has gone with here I feel like it probably should be something like this but overall that's a pretty good team so let's go take a look quickly what the Padres did just to get an idea see how they kind of so obviously Verdugo's in the team, Urias is on the bench there. And did they really make any changes at all? It doesn't really look like it. And if we take a look at the pitching staff, it looks like they brought in Kenta Maeda, which is an interesting pickup there. But Waka, Maeda, Nick Martinez, Matthew Boyd as well, Martin Perez, and a few other new names into their squad. So it looks like they really changed up the team quite a bit. Obviously with Soto's money off the books, it kind of allows them to spend a little bit more because Soto's probably going to make around 25-ish mil, maybe 30 mil in arbitration, which is a lot of money. But there's that. Why am I on the, the Yankees? I'm meant to be on the Red Sox. So here we go. We're with the Red Sox. Let's see how this year plays out. So the Red Sox went out and got another outfielder from the Cubs, Ian Happ. How does that Im like impact the lineup now? Like Ian Happ doesn't even start. What's the point of getting him? If, I mean, sure. Why not? I, I guess. All right, so the season's over. 93-69, four games above the Yankees, and it looks like the Red Sox, obviously division winners, and they're going to be taking on the winner of Cleveland and Houston. Shohei had the most strikeouts and the most wins, and then also Devers had a really good season with Soto and also Otani there as well. So, I mean, right off the rip, you can tell that this team looks like they're pretty good. And fourth in batting average, if we hop over to the runs really quick, third in runs, I saw that their ERA was a, a team ERA of just over four. So I'm assuming ERA wise, they're going to be a little bit farther down the list. Yeah, currently 15th, which is right around the middle. It, it is the middle exactly. And awards wise, we have a Cy Young for Shohei and an MVP for Shohei as well with Devers and Otani both there in the MVP race. Obviously, Otani won it three Braves on the other side. And if we quickly look through the rest of the awards some interesting names Saya made it to the Mets okay so the Cubs just had a clear out it looks like which is interesting there but let's quickly take a peek and see what the the squad looks like with the Red Sox so okay I mean yeah Chris Martin definitely shouldn't have been playing as much as he did same thing with Austin Pruitt but for the most part uh okay Brennan Bernardino also was was pretty bad but everybody else was actually pretty good for this team. You know, obviously Shohei was a Cy Young winner and an MVP winner. He was really solid. Chris Sale was good, even though he started to regress. You got Brian Bayo, Ooh, Nick Pavetta, yikes, and then Cutter Crawford. So overall, pretty decent. But we got to see this offense because Jack Peterson, Ian Happ, Bobby Dahlbeck, Yu Chang. I mean, this team, like the bench itself looks decent like Ian Happ only played 60 games and had a pretty good 60 games Jack Peterson only had four red bats which is crazy he had a double and a triple and then looking at the rest of the team some some decent bats there for sure and then of course the starters with Jaron Duran had a, a decent year you've got Yoshida who had a, a down year compared to what he did last year 
But then, of course, Juan Soto's putting up a 400 batting or on base percentage. Otani also had a 373 on base percentage with a 980 OPS, almost 50 home runs. Devers had almost 50 home runs. Tristan Casas had a pretty decent season. You got Marcelo Meyer, who made his debut. And honestly, in 50 at bats, he looks legit. Trevor Story had a little bit of a meh season. And then Kyle Teal ended up getting the call up and definitely struggled in the time that he had in the majors. But overall, the Red Sox are looking legit. So in the postseason, they're going to be taking on the Astros. And in game one, they win. Game two, they lose. Game three, they lose again. So it's not looking great. Pavetta versus Kershaw. They're still alive. Final game. Red Sox are eliminated. So let's quickly see if the Red Sox do re-sign Juan Soto. If they don't, I feel like we just move on and move to the next team. They currently have a pretty mediocre offer put out to him. So, I mean, it's definitely possible that he still signs with them anyways, because it seems like teams don't give a full offer to Juan Soto ever. They always, they always undercut him. They always shortchange him. So they definitely could be good enough to get him to sign. So let's see what happens. In the end, the Cubs signed Juan Soto. Seven years, 175 mil. So for the Red Sox, they traded for one season of Juan Soto. And let's let's just quickly see what the rest of the offseason looks like for them. But the Juan Soto experiment has ended. I will say, I've been keeping track of some of these moves. The Cardinals went crazy. I just want to point out what they did with their, uh, with their team really quick. Because the Cardinals, I saw they picked up Bueller... Corbin Burns and Pete Alonzo. That's that's a good offseason. And then they made a midseason trade of Dylan Cease. I mean, that's a good looking team. That's a team that's going for it. But the Red Sox as a whole, this is what they did in the offseason. No trades. I don't want the Red Sox. I want the Yankees. But in free agency, any big moves? I'm seeing some like Colt Wong, Josh Donaldson, Marisnik, Patrick Wisdom. Jose Quintana it doesn't really look like they went out like Mike Clevenger Paul Blackburn Clay Holmes yeah it doesn't really look like they went out and replaced um Soto but I guess they did trade for Ian Happ also so I guess he could fill in in the outfield but you know what for one season of Soto they made the playoffs and they also had Otani in the squad so I feel like that's a pretty good year for the Red Sox so for the second team, we're going to go to the Cubs, who I obviously am a fan of. And if the Cubs want Juan Soto, go out and get Juan Soto. And I'm seeing a lot of links to Christopher Morel being the main piece that the Padres are interested in. And I know there was a tweet that went out that said that the Padres would be willing to do a one-for-one -one Christopher Morel for Juan Soto. I don't believe that one bit. I don't think that's that's a possibility. I definitely think you got to give some sort of package up. But... If they want Christopher Morrell, as much as I love him, I love the energy he brings to the team, he's not hes not Juan Soto. Give me Juan Soto. So obviously, we're going to start with Christopher Morrell, who they actually have at a very, very, very similar like trade value as Juan Soto. I know Soto's a free agent at the end of the year. I know Christopher Morrell has utility. The issue with Morrell right now is there really isn't a set position for him. And I feel like until you do that, that kind of hinders his value. He does have team control for quite a while. Um, really only has like one full season, maybe a season and a half under his belt. So again, I would hate to see Christopher Morel leave, but if we got Juan Soto for him, I would be sold. Um, so what I'm thinking is maybe like a pitching prospect and then also like close to an MLB ready prospect as well, or maybe like an MLB ready pitcher slash reliever. I guess it's technically still the same thing. But um, names I've seen thrown out is um, Palencia. I've also seen um, other relievers thrown out. I've seen um, Gray's name pop up a little bit. And so what I'm thinking here is Keegan Thompson for a close to MLB ready slash MLB ready pitcher because he has some um, experience in the majors. I've also seen Wesneski's name thrown out in rumors as well. So, looking at the value there, I guess we could go Morel, Thompson, Wesneski, or we could go Morel, Thompson, and Gray, which gets us up to 26. So, I might go a little bit higher than Gray, and instead, maybe we go with someone in this range i guess we could just throw in wesneski i do feel like that's a lot of pitching 
but I've said that we were going towards like the 30-ish range mark. And I like I said, I do think if you go Morel and Wisniewski, you could probably go a little bit cheaper. But we're, we're going to go with this just for the sake of the video to get close to 30 overall. So let's go make that trade and then I'll be the show. So here we go. This is the trade. It's all done. Let's go accept it. All right, so for the Cubs, let's go take a look and see what they did in the offseason to see how they could supplement this trade. So obviously they made the trade, right? Soto, boom, boom, boom. Free agency, it looks like Eikhoff, Davinsky, Jonathan Scope, some other interesting names there. Seth Brown, Jake Faria, Jake Junis. No Cody Bellinger, no Candelario back. What is what let's let's take a look at this team here. So Talkman, Velasquez, Amaya, Madrigal, and Canario. Madrigal and Canario are your bench, which you know, okay, but the starting lineup with Horner, Suzuki, Soto, Wisdom, Cody Bellinger. Oh, Cody Bellinger did resign. They didn't show me that he resigned. He resigned. Cody Bellinger's back. Uh Ian Happ, Swanson, Seth Brown at first, and then Jan Gomes. Honestly, I could see PCA being in center with Bellinger at first. That's definitely a possibility. So I feel like right here, if they feel like this is the best lineup that they can put out, sure, go with it. I definitely think PCA could get a shout. Uh, Matt Mervis could get a shout over Seth Brown. Um, Kevin Alcantara probably is a little bit later in the year. But it'll be interesting to see what happens. I feel like this is an okay team right here. If you look at the pitching rotation, I feel like iffy i know michael fulmer isn't pitching in this upcoming season because of surgery so it'll be interesting to see what happens but overall an interesting mix of moves and at least they brought back cody ballinger and they brought in um juan soto so i feel like that'd be a pretty good offseason all right so the cubs finished 78 and 84 which is definitely not what you would want if you just traded for one of the best players in baseball as a team they had one of the best batting averages so it looks like if we look at the runs as well they're a top 10 offense in the league it looks like the pitching probably let them down quite a bit let's take a peek yeah 27th in baseball the only person who had a sub 4 era was jameson tayo that is a huge problem juan soto offensively absolutely insane and then if you look at the awards hank aaron award mvp and a batting title so Juan Soto came in and did everything that you would want from him it's just the pitching really let the team down and from that probably Juan Soto is walking in the offseason so I don't even think we need to look and see if he comes back because if you're finishing fourth in the division you might as well just let him go you just don't even offer him anything so let's take a look at this awful pitching staff. You got Justin Steele with a pretty high ERA, Marcus Stroman up to a six ERA almost, Kyle Hendricks 4.3, Jordan Wicks 4.8, and Jamison Tyon 3.8. Ben Brown came up, gave him about a four and a half ERA. Drew Smiley was, you know, Drew Smiley. Michael Rucker didn't pitch. Jake Junis was pretty good. That's probably your best pitcher out of the entire season. Mark Leiter and then Michael Fulmer. Love to see it. That was a lie though. There you go. Tip the cap to him. Fantastic. Offensively, let's take a look at the bench. Talkman, okay. Wisdom, okay. Jan Gomes, yeah, all right. I, I'm kind of getting a little theme here based on the bench. Nico Horner in the leadoff spot was okay. Wasn't anything crazy. Same thing with Nick Madrigal. You've got Juan Soto, who was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Cody Bellinger had a pretty good year as well. You got Seiya Suzuki, who was fantastic with a 30 double, 30 home run year. Ian Happ was, was all right. Nothing too crazy. Dansby Swanson had a pretty solid season with 25 home runs. And then Seth Brown, overall, honestly, Seth Brown was not that bad. I think that's a that's an okay year. And then Miguel Amaya. So overall, the team doesn't look terrible offensively i think this is definitely one of the better offenses in the league based off of the team rankings it's just when you're pitching can't can't pitch you, you know you're you're looking pretty bad but let's see do they resign him in the offseason do we look at a second year with juan soto as a cub let's see what happens okay so they currently have an eight-year contract out there which i mean is definitely a possibility that he would resign there um, doesn't look like they've They've got a couple offers out there, which I don't necessarily agree with those offers, but hey, whatever. Let's see. Does he resign with the squad? And he does not. He goes to the Twins for way more money than the Cubs offered. So, so far, both teams haven't been able to resign Juan Soto. Let's see if the Yankees can. All right. So for the Yankees, it's a little interesting because the player that I've seen kind of rumored with Soto 
or for the Soto trade is a player that has a negative value currently, and that's Anthony Rizzo, minus seven. I know there's some concerns about the concussion. I feel like if, if you're looking at the Yankees, it's kind of the Yankees' fault, right? You had a player who suffered a concussion, and it took you months to identify it, and a brain injury takes quite some time to recover. So if you've got a guy who's suffering from a brain injury, and you continue to play him over and over and over again, it's not going to heal. So of course, the guy is going to have a little bit of a, a negative impact into his game when the guy's not even fully healthy. But I feel like Rizzo is still a fantastic player. Obviously, you're looking at that contract. And obviously, the age is a little bit of a factor. And of course, you know, an injury can, you know, brain injury can still affect him going forward. So I'm not saying that in Rizzo is a bad piece to move, but I feel like if you're adding him into the trade, you're probably going to have to pay a little bit extra as well. So that could be a prospect that could be paying Rizzo's contract. Um, it could just be giving more players in general. So because I've seen his name thrown around, we'll throw him in. And then I feel like if we're doing that, let's throw in a little bit higher of a rated prospect or just a, a, a piece in general. So maybe a Peraza maybe a Cabrera. I feel like one of those two could definitely be part of this trade. I don't think they want to get rid of Spencer Jones. Probably not Austin Wells either. Definitely not Volpe. Definitely not Jason Dominguez. Everson Pereira, I doubt either. But would you be willing to part with one of these two if that meant that Juan Soto was in the team? I feel like you'd be open to it. Um, maybe Spencer Jones, maybe Everson Pereira. Again, I know they're two of the higher rated prospects, but I feel like you'd be okay with that being like the main chunk of the trade to get it done. Okay, I don't necessarily like giving up this much. I just feel like because of the Rizzo part, it definitely makes me have to, to put in a little bit more. So I'm thinking maybe like Peraza, Pereira, and then like Vasquez. I feel like those would be the three main pieces of the trade. I just threw in Warren to kind of get it closer to the 30. Um, and because on MLB The Show, I can only trade three pieces anyways. I'm thinking Pereira, Peraza, Vasquez. I think those are the three. Um, and then obviously Pereira is kind of the big piece there. Peraza, you could also probably try to persuade the Padres to take Cabrera here. But I'm going to go Peraza, Pereira, Vasquez. I feel like that's, those are going to be the three pieces for this trade. Rizzo and Warren, I just threw in to kind of, just because I've seen Rizzo's name in there a little bit. But yeah, uh, Pereira, Peraza, Vasquez, that's the trade. All right, so here's the trade. Boom, it's done. And then to start this season, this is currently what the team is looking like. Like I said, I probably could, you know, you could probably throw Rizzo in the trade if you really wanted to. But for the sake of this, we're going to keep him with the team. So Glaber, Rizzo, you've got Judge, Soto, Stanton, Jake Bowers, Higashioka, who I've also seen that they're willing to part ways with not in a Soto trade but just in general Volpe and LeMayhew so this is currently what the squad is looking like and then looking at the pitching it looks pretty Yankees-esque besides Drew Steckenreiter so let's let's see how this plays out with Soto and a shocking trade Casey Mize is now a Yankee for Jason Dominguez okay I'm not I'm not controlling trades I'm letting the CPU handle everything so that's an interesting move for sure and then the Royals have traded Michael Garcia to the Yankees for Luis Gill. Okay, interesting move. Let's see if any other moves happen. I guess the Cubs are not happy with Saya, so there's that. All right, so the Yankees finished last in the East, and it really only shows that the Red Sox really wanted it by going out and getting Otani and Soto in the offseason. Team ranking-wise, they were one of the worst batting average-wise, and then also runs-wise, 22nd with 667. And then team ERA wise, seventh, so not terrible. So at least the pitching was there. It just seems like the offense went completely missing. Awards wise, were there any Yankees in the race whatsoever? It doesn't look like it, which not what you want to see. You'd at least want to be somewhat in a, a position to have some good players. So Rodon was okay. You've got Martin Perez, who wasn't too bad, actually. Pretty good season. Marinaccio was, wasn't good at all. Second writer was, though, so surprise there. Uh, Tommy Canely was good. Uh, Johnny Lasagna was really, really bad. Scott Efros was also bad in the six innings. He pitched. Clay Holmes, not his best work. And then if you take a look at Garrett Cole, pretty, pretty good stuff from Garrett Cole. Same thing with Michael King, Nestor Cortez as well. Domingo Herman was pretty good. I mean, the rotation as a whole, not bad. Like, pretty solid. But again, it just seems like the offense went missing. 
Stanton didn't really, oh, I guess he played 422 at bats. He just wasn't good. Trevino, not a bad backup catcher. Higashioka, they have three catchers on the team. They do. Okay. Higashioka wasn't that great. Cabrera wasn't either. And then looking at the rest of the squad, Michael Garcia came in and gave them a pretty decent season. Uh, Glaber was was iffy. Like, it wasn't terrible at all. Juan Soto was fantastic with 38 home runs and 21 doubles. Same thing with Judge. Those two back-to-back -back would be pretty scary. Austin Wells, 50 at-bats, was good. That's what you want to see from him. Rizzo had a decent season for sure. Trey Sweeney was also called up. They're just going to the youth here with the Yankees. And then Volpe also Esteban Floreal. So not great. So do the Yankees, are the Yankees the one team that re-signed Juan Soto or is he also going to walk? Currently they have nine years, 204 mil. I'm assuming someone's going to outbid them, but hey, I've seen him sign for cheaper. And the Cubs end up signing him 10 years, 238. So no team signed Soto. At least I should say re-signed him. But the Cubs seem to be the most active in trying to get him. But that's how the video is going to end. Really what I wanted to see is what would happen if you give the teams an offseason, what they would do with their money, and also what would happen once they acquire Juan Soto. And honestly, the Red Sox were really the only team that went out and went for it. Acquiring Soto and Otani in the same offseason is a pretty big big move and i feel like it worked out for them they're the only team to make the postseason and sadly they weren't able to resign him but i still think with the signing of otani still puts him in a pretty good spot the yankees and the cubs let him walk and i mean both teams weren't even close to the playoffs but again things could change different outcomes can happen and the yankees could have a really good offseason this year and same thing with the cubs so it'll be interesting to see what happens does soto get traded or does he stay with the padres let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and if you want to see some more franchise action check out the video on screen now i definitely think you will enjoy it other than that i'll catch you in the next one peace